Hey there, John Morris here, johnmorrisonline.com. Welcome back to another episode. This one, I want to talk about how to become a web developer without a degree. And we're going to go through the key decisions that you'll need to make to become a web developer without going to college or getting a degree. I want to talk about this because I've done some videos on college degrees in the past and I tend to get you know, sort of some pushback and, and, and understandably, because sometimes I don't really say things, uh, as clearly or as, as I would like, but I wanted to sort of go through this for anybody who's kind of already made the decision that they really don't want to pursue a degree path and they, but they still want to become a web developer. And before we start, I just want to make sure that I properly put emphasis on web developer because that's probably the biggest pushback I get with this. And they start talking about things that are not web development and why you need a degree for those things. So if you're going to be doing machine learning and AI and all these other things, then maybe there's some arguments for needing a degree and a CS degree and all that. But we're talking specifically about web development. So I want to make sure and, and, and say that clearly up front. So with that said, let's get into this, and I will say right off the bat again, and I know this will be maybe controversial for some people, but you do not need, in my opinion, a degree to become a web developer. Now, you can go off on whatever rant you want about why someone shouldn't want to be just a web developer or why they should want to get into all of these other things, etc. You can do that if you'd like, but that really isn't what we're talking about here. Again, you do not need a degree, degree to be a web developer. And some of us are perfectly fine just being web developers. So uh, again, just want to state that clear and upfront. In fact, I think for the most part, a degree is a waste of time for web developers because it's rare, although this is changing, but it's still, I think, fairly rare to find a degree program that actually teaches just web development. And it's even more rare to find one that teaches up-to-date information, which is a big deal because things change so rapidly in technology altogether, but in particular in web development. And even if you can find that stuff, I still think that you're probably just going to overpay. So even if you can find one, even if you find one that's up-to-date, you're, you're still going to overpay for it. So I just really do not think uh, that it's valuable for someone to get a degree to become a web developer. Uh, and I don't think in my, again, opinion for web developers, the piece of paper gets you as far as a lot of people try to say, again, other areas of tech, maybe so, but in particular for web developers, I, I'm, I'm just not so sure. I'm not convinced of that. So I don't see much of an advantage to getting a degree for a web development. And I certainly do not think it is necessary uh, which is ultimately kind of the point of this. But let's say, okay, you got that, you agree with that. Let's sort of move on from that. And let's talk about how would I go, you know, how would I go about actually then becoming a web developer without degree? Like, what do I need to do? And the reality of this is there's so many different resources, and so many different options out there that becoming a web developer is really just a series of decisions that you need to make. And, and I think be smart about how you make those. And then you just sort of couple that with a lot of hard work and, and persistence. Now, I can't help you with the work ethic and persistence part, at least not in this episode, uh, other than to say that those will probably be the most important parts of all of this, uh, even more important than being intelligent. I've done episodes on that and so forth. But uh, that's about all I can say, at least in, in this context. But what I can do is walk you through the decisions that you'll need to make and help you make them. And, and I think this is uh, a very important part of this because I don't think a lot of people talk about this or necessarily think about this this way. So that's what I want to do here and help you make those key decisions that you'll need to make to become a web developer uh, and not do it as a part of some college or university program and getting a degree. So the first thing that you need to decision you need to make actually goes back to I happened to do an episode on this just yesterday and so uh, it's going to be a little bit redundant but it is the thing that you need to do and the first thing that you need to think about is your career path because that is going to determine some of the decisions that you make later and in particular you want to decide whether you want to pursue in, in context to this I think you'll you'll want to decide whether you want to pursue a tech job or you want to become a freelancer so 
In yesterday's episode, I talked about also you could be an inventor, but I think in this particular context, we're talking about primarily tech jobs or freelancing. So uh, you'll have to make that decision because that's going to heavily influence the 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 technologies that you're going to want to get into, which then is going to influence the things that you need to learn uh, in order to pursue that career path. So it's so important that you think about this first. Now, uh, so again, uh, if you want to get a lot more information on that, just go back to the episode right before this one. It's how to start a career in web development. I spend a really big chunk of time talking about this in that episode. I'm not going to rehash it here. Uh, it's all in that episode if you want to, but do this first before you do anything else. All right. Once you've decided that, then you'll need to figure out your technology path. And again, I did talk about this, uh, in the the past episode but i want to go into this a little bit more here and, and come at it from a little bit different angle and the reason that you 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 want to do this now after the career path is certain technologies are better suited for freelancing and certain technologies are better suited for standard check tech jobs meaning in terms of the labor market or being able to get work and so forth you know in freelancing WordPress is a really big deal. PHP is still very uh, popular and so forth. Whereas if you go sort of to the tech job, especially a startup space, you're not going to see near as much PHP. You're going to see more Node and Go and those things. So depending on what route you want to go, then the technologies you'll need to learn to be successful in that career path are going to be different. So uh, you you want to think about that. And, And again, like I said, the episode before this, I go into that but the big decision here, in my opinion, or the uh, sort of another decision that you'll you'll want to make here is whether you want to start out and specialize in being a front end or back end developer. Now, I believe that eventually you'll want to be both. You want to be what's called a full stack developer. You can do both front end and back end development. That's the most well rounded sort of position. But every full stack developer that I know has sort of one that they're a little bit better at, right? They can do the front end stuff, but they're a little, they're, they're way better at the back end. That's what they know best. Or they can do the back end stuff, but they're really, really good at the front end stuff. That's usually what I find with full stack developers. You're not going to find too many people that are just complete experts at both. And in a lot of ways, it's not really a hundred percent necessary in my opinion. So you want to be both, but you'll want to start out on one side and you'll want to really dig in on that one side. So if you're more of a visual person who's into design and that sort of thing, then you'll probably want to start out on uh, as a front end developer. And if you're more of the gearhead type who likes kind of breaking things and taking things apart and figuring out how they work and getting to, to sort of the inside inner workings of something, then you'll probably want to start out as a back end developer. Now, the tricky part about this uh, and the thing that can be somewhat confusing is that even if you're going to start out as a backend developer, you still need to learn basic HTML and CSS, which are front end languages. And the reason that is, is because back end code ultimately outputs to front end code. The whole point of the back end is to, to output to these front end uh, languages. So in order to actually be able to do anything with the back end, for the most part, you have to uh, understand how to construct that output. And so you have to, again, learn HTML, uh, and CSS. So again, no, for, for that reason, no matter what kind of web developer you want to be, I, in my opinion, your first two languages need to be HTML and CSS, regardless if you're going to do front end or back end, because you just sort of got to learn those. And they're actually, it's a good way to start and get introduced to, to, uh, languages with languages that are actually fairly uh, straightforward and easy to learn. Now, if you're someone who is at that point, I do have an HTML course it's called the Beginner's Guide to HTML. You can get access to that for nothing uh, and start learning these languages and learn them fast, so you can sort of get them out of the way and and move on with your career. Anyway, you can learn more about that course and get the link for the no cost access at johnmorrisonline.com/html. All right, next up, then you'll want to decide your learning path. So now we know what career path we're going to go down. Now we know the technologies that we want to learn or we need to learn. Now it's how am I going to go about learning these things? And there's a number of options. And, of course, we've already kind of decided that uh, we're not going to go the college route. So you, we've ruled that out. And the the main two or, or three, depending on how you want to categorize this, are 
uh, boot camps and online classes. And you also have online boot camps, which are kind of a mix of the two. So I've included that here uh, in the graphic, but I tend to include those in the online class part of things, but we'll, we'll go through this. So for, for boot camps, the big benefit is they're usually more hands-on. They're the college type atmosphere, or at least the, the, the in-person sort of uh, learning that you get from a college. And so you get that hands-on, uh, in-person type of training that uh, some people want or uh, need. And but you're not going to spend, you know, a hundred thousand dollars on these boot camps. Uh, the big disadvantage is sort of the other side of that coin is that they are still pretty costly. I mean, a lot of them are ten to twenty k. Sometimes you you'll see more, maybe a little bit less in certain uh, areas. But they they're still fairly costly, and they're also location dependent because you're going to be there in person. You'll have to go where the boot camp is. I don't uh, I haven't looked at every boot camp out there, but unlike a college where you have you know you have a dormitory and all that sort of thing included in the cost. You might not have that with a boot camp, So you got to kind of figure that out on your own. So that's an added expense that you may not have uh, thought of. So they are still fairly costly. They're location uh, dependent. And, and so that can be some of the disadvantage there. I think that's why the online boot camps have popped up because they're trying to give you a mix of both. So they're trying to usually the online boot camps are a little bit more guided than say just an online class. An online class, you're pretty usually pretty much on your own. They're kind of self guided. Whereas an online boot camp, they're gonna kind of tell you what to learn. They're gonna sort of walk with you. You may even have uh, you know an instructor, or someone there who's kind of guiding you through this and working uh, working with you. But they're all done online, so they're not location dependent they're usually a little bit cheaper than an in-person boot camp but more expensive than an online class so there's sort of this middle ground uh between the two so uh again that that's another option that's out there for the online classes you know the main benefit uh from that is that you can learn from anywhere you can learn on your own schedule they're usually much cheaper than college uh classes and boot camps i mean udemy has stuff that you know, they do these sales all the time where you can get courses for 10 to $15. And the courses are often really, really good. I, it's a little funny because I think people who didn't grow up, who have grown up with this stuff already existing, get a little bit spoiled on this stuff. But compared to, again, you know, old man me back in the day, the early 2000s, the kind of courses that you can get for 10 or $15 today are, are pretty uh, it's pretty insane what you can get. So they're usually pretty good courses uh, if you if you pick one that uh, a lot of people are taking, and and they're 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 not very expensive. The big disadvantage is you don't get the hands-on in-person training you get with a boot camp. So in the end of all of this, it really comes down to what you think you need. So that's sort of the big three things. Again, you've got your three major decisions that you need to make. And I want to just summarize real quick and then give you my opinion ultimately on all this. So you've got the three major decisions, your career path, your technology path, and your learning path. And they build on top of each other. Your career path is going to determine your technology path. Your technology path is going to de determine you know, what you need to learn in terms of your learning path. And so you just have to make those key decisions. And then from there... It's just a matter of, you know, grinding and working hard and all those other things. So as for my opinion, when it comes to career path, I always recommend developers spend some time freelancing. So I'd at least start there and then switch to a te tech job if you really don't like it. Because you learn just so much about project management and working with clients and a lot of these intangible things that you might not learn uh, just working a tech job. And so it's going to help you in your career no matter what path you ultimately take. So again, I, if it were me, I would f start out freelancing, see what I could do there, see if I like it. And if I don't like it, then switch to doing a regular tech job and I'm still going to have really uh, very invaluable skills uh, that I can use that I'll lear have learned from freelancing. When it comes to the the technology path, you know, I learned HTML and CSS, and then I went back end and learned PHP. If I could go back, I would change that, and I'd go ahead and learn JavaScript before getting into back end. And the main reason why is you're already two thirds of the way there. You've learned HTML, CSS, JavaScript's really sort of the next big technology that you need to learn. That's sort of a, a core 
uh, language. So uh, you might as well continue and finish it up. Um, you know, and I'd also spend more time learning about design because visual appeal is so important no matter what you do that learning design is going to help you no matter what kind of developer you ultimately decide to be. So if I could go back again, I would spend a little bit more time on the front end than I did. I dove into PHP pretty quickly uh, in my career and, and sort of went down that rabbit hole with WordPress and all this other stuff. So that would be my recommendation there. And then finally for the learning path, what I would say is take some online courses to start, and if you can learn that way, then there's really no big need to to do anything else. Like you don't have to go to a boot boot camp just to go to a boot camp. You know, save your money if you can, and only go if you aren't able to. You know, if you're struggling after taking you know multiple online classes, that's when I would consider taking a boot camp. Or maybe you already know that about yourself, and so you can just go right into a a, a boot camp. But to me, that's the decision point. There is. You know, can I do this without the the hands-on in-person stuff? And it's not something to be, we you know, shouldn't feel down about or like that says something. Like there's people who just need more hands-on learning and training. And some people are more visual or aud auditory learners. So they're able to learn better with the classes, whereas, you know, you, you might be better with a boot camp. Both of those kinds of people can go on to be very good developers and how they went about it doesn't necessarily determine, you know, how successful they're going to be. So just figure if you don't know that, figure that out. I would start with some online classes. If you can do it that way, then, hey, save your money and, and, and go for it. And then, like I said, from there, it's just a lot of hard work, persistence, you know, commitment, passion, all the intangibles that you need to be successful no matter what you do. Those are going to go into play. So. That is my take on how to become a developer without a degree. Again, I absolutely think it's 100% possible. I think for the most part, a degree is probably unnecessary for someone who wants to be a web developer, in particular with all the resources that are out there. So take that for what it's worth. If you like the show, I'd appreciate it. If you would support the show, you can do so several different ways. So first off, over on Patreon, you'll get access to all my officially and unofficially released courses, tutorials, source code, basically everything there. That's kind of my brain dump. You can learn more about all those perks at johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon. You can get access to all of my officially released courses plus 21,000 plus others over on Skillshare and you can do it all for nothing. As a teacher there, I can give you an exclusive two-month free trial that isn't exclusive. You can't just get that off their site or whatever. So if you want, want to learn more about that, just go to johnmorrisonline.com slash Skillshare. That'll explain everything there. And then finally, if you want free sample lessons from my officially released courses, no credit card required, none of that, just go to johnsfreetoots.com. All right, that'll do it. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next time.